and here we are in Greenwich and this is the lovely Martin Trainer, who is fantastic, he is a writer and my friend and uh, he's the first person to be interviewed on in this channel regarding something other than music. How are you Martin? I'm grand. Fantastic. Um, I want people to know who you are and uh, what you do. Tell us a bit more of your history regarding the, uh, the pen and the paper. Well, I have always written. Um, I'm an old sod now, I'm in my 50s. Um, but I started re writing seriously around about 1998 and working on short stories and basically developing the craft. That's what we were doing. Um, and, and I got some short, got my first short story published in 2003. So it was a long haul from starting to that five years of, of hard graft to get the short story out. Wrote some more short stories, got those published, and then I began my first novel. Wow. Uh, I wrote three novels and didn't publish any of them. They, in America, they call them trunk novels. Um, what they are is a, they're kind of a training novel. Uh, and, and it is, it's just purely just working on the craft. Um, and that was that, that's where I went from that point then. I wrote my first and published my first book. It came out in 2011. It was called The Silver Mist, uh, based around a Down syndrome girl and her, how the world, how she relates to the world around her. It's kind of based on quantum physics a little bit in, in perceptions of reality and do people who are perceived as mentally challenged actually perceive the universe more differently than the rest of us. Wow. Um, I then started working on my next book, which uh, is actually an editorial at the minute. Um, uh, it's um, a, a dark fairy story based here, based here in London, very lean and very heavily on the old narrated fairy story kind of thing, but dark fairies, dark and scary, uh, secret garden meets Guillermo del Toro kind of stuff. Wow, I have to ask you, that's a very comprehensive beginning, thank you. Yeah. Um, I have to ask you, what is the, the driving force behind your writing? What makes you lean towards the supernatural? Well, what made me lean towards, I've always, that's what I wrote as, read as a teenager. That's what I kind of tinkered with throughout my life. That was, there's also more depth in it. There's more manoeuvre to, uh, more more scope to manoeuvre around and broaden things. It's not, not, as far, not to say that other books aren't. Like, The Silver Mist is more metaphysical than it would be supernatural. Uh, but that metaphysical aspect allows me to play in more areas. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what I like about supernatural or uh, genre novels, um, whether they're literary or not. I, I like genre novels because they, they, I like to read them because they take you away. And whenever they take you away, there's more to explore. Yeah. Um, so you can actually explore, you know, what, what a lot of um, uh, straightforward drama type fiction tries to do. And that is look at the, the human condition. You can put more stresses and more uh, difficult situations and conflicts when you bring more outside forces, whether it be supernatural or whatever. So, uh, and it makes for an interesting read for the reader, and that's what it's all about, it's about the reader. So. Fantastic. I have to say, before we go to our second part, which will cover the project you're doing now, which I'm very excited for you about, um, tell me three of your influences in terms of your, your style and uh, just, you know, having a conduit to your imagination. What, where my influences come yeah, from? Yeah, yeah, three of them. Uh, well, well, three of them, uh, definitely. Paul Auster, because he's he's the the modern uh, has been for a number of decades, but he's the modern American writer, and the modern American writer in the literary field, I think, sets the pace. Uh, in in years gone by, it was the likes of Bradbury and and you know and Kelsey and stuff sure. like that. But uh, uh, Vonnegut is another one. Mm. Uh, all good writers and all writers that I love, uh, but. Paul Auster has taken a little flip. He's, he's moved us up forward. He's taken the, it all a little bit. Of, and if the literary, what they call literary, all fiction's literary, but, but that kind of standalone book. When they're writing those and they're setting a trend, everything can, tends to follow. And that's Paul Auster's one. Okay. The other one is a good old London boy called China Maville. Um, terrific writer, fantastic premises. What he does is he writes books that whenever you read them, I turn around and go, Bloody! I wish, wish I'd thought of that. That's what he does. His idea, he's an ideas guy beyond belief. And um, the other one would uh, Umberto Eco, oh, okay. uh, the Italian writer, because what Umberto does is he can do that sweet spot between creating f worlds and writing it with the flair and style 
big books, big, big books that Flair and Style that engage you completely start to finish. And he's, a, he's another ideas man. So I think when it comes down to it, when it come, I, I read readers who are ideas men, who come up with that, what if, and it hasn't been done before. So oh, wow. Yeah. Fantastic. I look forward to hearing more about you in part two, Martin. You rock. You rock. <laughs>